Hi and welcome to this work in progress demonstration regarding the new MakeHuman Blender integration. My name is Joel Palmius and I am the community manager for MakeHuman. First, a background. MakeHuman and Blender has had a long relationship. Indeed, MakeHuman even started out as a Blender plugin sometime during the later Stone Age. However, during modern history, that is for more than a decade, MakeHuman and Blender have been two separate applications. The only way to interact between them has been to export a file from one of the applications and then import that file in the other application. While this is a robust and tried approach, it also makes the round trip between the two somewhat tedious. In order to make the interaction between the two more comfortable, a project was started during the summer of 18. The aim of the project was to be able to fetch data directly from a running MakeHuman instance and insert it automatically in Blender without having to manually export a file. While there were some older initiatives to this end, these were rather clunky due to the large overhead involved in serializing and deserializing large mesh objects. However, in this new project, data is now shared in a binary format that is very similar in both Blender and MakeHuman, meaning the overhead is almost gone. While the data stream is one way only, that is, from MakeHuman to Blender, it is believed that with the current foundation, it would also be convenient to move data in the other direction at some point in the future. Before continuing with the demonstration, I just want to mention MHX2. MHX2 has for a long time been the standard way of moving data from MakeHuman to Blender. MHX2 isn't going anywhere and it will be bundled in the upcoming release. While the new integration will be sufficient for many use cases, MHX2 offers additional features such as an advanced custom rig and vSeams. Anyway, what we are going to see in this video is functionality which is already available and believed to be working smoothly in most cases. In order to test it, you can simply download the latest build of MakeHuman. The new integration will be a feature of the upcoming 1.2.0 MakeHuman release. Having downloaded and extracted a zip file with the latest version of MakeHuman, at the point of making this video alpha 2 of 120, you will find a directory containing both the MakeHuman installation file and a directory with the Blender plugin. The MakeHuman installation file contains everything you need on the MakeHuman side, but for the Blender side there is a plugin with a somewhat anonymous name MH Community. We will use this later to enable the new integration functionality. To demonstrate the functionality, we will begin with modeling a basic human tool. Nothing special is needed. We will just add the usual suspects, such as eyebrows and so on. We will definitely want a skeleton. Contrary to MHX2, you have to choose this on the MakeHuman side. A pose might be cute too, just to demonstrate that it works. And a skin texture is always nice. In Blender, we will go to File and User Preferences to enable the needed add-on. We can install the add-on from File and find it in the directory we saw earlier. Don't forget to actually enable the add-on too. Finally save the User Preferences. Having closed the Preferences window, we can now find a new tab with lots of interesting settings. It is beyond the scope of this video to describe all these, but you will find a button called Import Human. Now when we click this button, we will run into an error which is easily solvable, but which merits some explanation. In the background, the new integration works through using a local network connection to MakeHuman. For security reasons, MakeHuman will not accept connections by default. We will have to explicitly tell MakeHuman that we accept requests from the outside. This is done by going to the Community and Socket tab and checking the Accept Connections box. Back in Blender, we can now click the Import Human button. On my nothing special Windows machine, the whole process takes a second or two, but then we have a tune with clothes, rig and textures imported. Rendering the image, we can see that textures and materials have been set up with reasonable defaults. 
textures have been linked from the MacHuman installation directory rather than being copied to Blender. By default, the rig is imported as is from MacHuman. By nature, this means that what you have got is a traditional FK rig. However, you can easily convert this to an IK rig by going to the Bone and IK tab and snap on IK controls. By doing so, you will get a number of extra control bombs for moving arms and legs using IK. In the final part of the demonstration, I will say a few words about the presets. When importing a tune, the default is to set it up for render and animation. However, it is also possible that you want to create clothes or targets for a specific character morph. If you want to do this, you can use one of the import presets on the import tab. By using a preset, all the specific settings will be overridden with defaults that fit, for example, make clothes, and some additional convenient configuration will be performed. One example of such configuration is that you will get mask modifiers for easily switching the helper geometry on and off. This concludes the demonstration. It should be noted that what is shown here is the status as per the release of the Make Human Community 120 Alpha 2. Things may look different when 120 is released in a stable version. As always, if you have questions, you are welcome to ask them on the forums. Support requests asked as comments to videos on YouTube risk going unanswered for a long time. For the latest information on Make Human, visit the community homepage. Thank you and happy modeling!